if you clean and maintain hard floors, you know how much they can take a beating and need special care. What that looks like, especially for educational facilities, is the focus of our discussion today. And to do that, I'm pleased to welcome an expert in this field, Rebecca Koffel, the Manager of Government Affairs and Sustainability at Spartan Chemical Company and the Chair of the Floor Care Products Division with the Household and Commercial Products Association, also called HCPA. Rebecca, welcome. Thank you for having me again. Yes, it's a pleasure. And it's our second interview. We did another one previously on the focus of clean and shiny hard floors. So in our video description of this recording, we'll put a link to that so folks can see the first part of this. So we're we're quite the team now, I believe. <laughs> I think so. Why is this an important topic for our viewers? Particularly, um, we're talking about educational floor maintenance and the way school schedules work. There's a huge amount of shutdown time in the summer that allows you to have unlimited access to the building, which is really kind of ideal when you have to do uh, more intensive floor maintenance. In fact, uh, there are estimates that upwards of 50% of summer labor hours are spent redoing floors in educational facilities. So it's a huge amount of time. It's a large investment, both in terms of the financial expense for, for labor and product, but for the people who are actually doing the work, we want to make sure that it's efficient and productive. And I know that a lot of educational facilities, especially elementary and junior and high schools, have slower summer months so they can get that work done that needs to be done. But share with us a few tips you have for custodial staff to maximize all of this. Sure. So assessing the floor is really the most important thing. It is not really necessary anymore uh, with the quality of floor finishes that exist to strip out every section of floor and refinish every section every summer. Um, usually about 25% will need that kind of intensive work and the other uh, remaining portion can just be top scrubbed and recoded. So really um, the best advice is to start out by doing a good survey of your facility and seeing what areas have deep discoloration or scratching, because if you do not strip those areas and you lay more finish on them, you'll build gloss and that will kind of highlight the imperfections in the floor. And you, you wanna start from a really good foundation. So you wanna pick the areas that actually require that kind of stripping and recoating and pick the areas that, that might be able to get away with just a scrub and a recoat um, that don't require that kind of labor. You make it sound pretty easy, but we know this type of work can be a challenge. Can you dig into this? What are some of the more common challenges or pitfalls that we should mention to our viewers? Sure. So some of the hardest things um, that staff in these facilities will have to deal with are really not something they can control. And that is specifically the fact that while these buildings are not operational for students, they often have setbacks in terms of their HVAC. And because a lot of buildings don't open anymore, meaning you can't create cross breezes with uh, windows and open doors to the outside, this can lead to conditions that make drying very, very difficult. And this is, is drying in general of your floor after you've stripped and scrubbed um, and rinsed the floor, but uh, specifically after you've applied a coat of finish. So making sure that you have good adequate airflow, making sure you have good equipment, so you're applying nice thin coats of floor finish, you can get that kind of rapid uh, recoat is really essential. Well, those are good thoughts. Challenges abound for sure. Let's close our discussion on this. What are your thoughts on the end user and manufacturer relationship to maximize that? How does that look to you for obtaining the best results? Sure. So manufacturers spend a lot of time from a formulation standpoint, building formulas that are really robust. So we're aware of what happens in these schools in the summer. We're aware that there are going to be conditions that aren't great. Uh, for allowing finish to dry. So we're really formulating to, to that as our standard and doing the best we can um, within VOC regulations and formula costs, et cetera. It's decently complicated, but we're doing our best to provide a formula that's robust and easy to use so that it can tolerate those extremes. But in addition to that, manufacturers are extremely good about uh, creating training programs and giving advice on how to use their products. 
So if end users are not interacting with the manufacturer on their advice for using their products, and I strongly encourage them to do so because that is a, a resource that's completely invaluable. Well, Rebecca, thank you for the tips today and the HCPA for all it does for the industry.